All right, we're going to do a quick intro on oblique asymptotes. When we're working with rational functions, p, x of x, p of x over q of x, and we find that the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, we're not going to have a horizontal asymptote. Instead, we're going to have oblique asymptotes. So the way we get to that is we're going to either, girls, please. The way we're going to get to that is we're either going to do synthetic division or long division. Let's do number one with long division. What's my first step? Awesome. Done that. I'm going to look at how many times x goes into x squared. In other words, what is x squared divided by x? Yes. So that's what I put over here. And because this is a binomial, which is required to divide a binomial, I'll put it there. x times x is x squared x times positive four is positive four x. How far off was I? Subtract, subtract. Negative five x minus 14. Now I'm gonna say x goes into negative five x. In other words, what's negative five x divided by x? I get negative five. Negative five times positive four is negative 20. Negative five times X is negative five X. Change the signs and add, and I get a six. So what, what does that mean overall? Um, X minus five plus six over X plus four is the back waves. Uh, close. I could rewrite this entire thing as x minus 5 plus 6 over x plus 4. Those are equivalent things, right? If I divide this polynomial by this, I get this. This is the answer. Now, if I were to compare this to the line y equals x minus 5, what would you say is true? perfect answer. It's a little bit different. And when I look at as x approaches infinity, how far apart are these two expressions? Right? But when x is some huge number, a gazillion, if I take six and I divide it by a gazillion and four, is this piece a big number or a little number? Uh, little number. Little, little number. What if I put in a negative infinity? Uh, uh, what if I put in little numbers for x? It's what if I put in like number. one half? Much bigger number. Much bigger number. What if I put in like negative three? And then, and then six three. over negative three plus four is six over one. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty big. What if I put in negative 3.9999999? Huge. Huge. So tell me what the asymptote is here. Okay, please listen. If I've got an asymptote at negative four, what we just said is that when I'm really close to that, like negative 3.99, it's a huge number. And if I put in negative 4.001, it's a negative huge number. Doesn't that kind of feel asymptotic? Doesn't it have like an impact of the asymptote? And when it reaches like positive infinity way out here, it's really, really close to this line y equals x minus five. It's asymptotic. And when it's really, really close to negative infinity here. It's asymptotic that way. Is this a horizontal asymptote? Yeah, called an oblique asymptote. So the story is, if you want to find out what your asymptote is because it's not horizontal, you do the synthetic division and forget about the remainder or the long division. 
So in other words, this one has an oblique asymptote, which would be y is equal to x minus 5. Circle that. That's your answer. You forget about the remainder because that's just what keeps it away from the asymptote. That's how far it is from the asymptote. Um, you have to have a remainder. If you didn't have a remainder, that means it was a factor and it's a whole. Okay, so we want a remainder, but we get rid of the more. Correct. Yeah. You throw it away. You throw it away. So let's, yeah, it, it describes how far away your actual graph is from that asymptote. We don't care how much it is. It just, there has to be something there. All right, so what about this one? Let's do this one with synthetic division. How do I set that up? And zero, because there's no constant term. And then over here, what do we put? Positive three, good. What makes that equal to zero? Bring it down, multiply. Bring it down, multiply. Bring it down. That's not zero. We have a remainder. So what would it be? Very good. We know that it started at x squared. We've now divided one of the x's out. So our result here should be a single x. That's our constant. That's our remainder. Uh, I'm assuming that the remainder on most of the problems is just coincidence. Total coincidence. It's not always a six. Yep. Okay, please do three and four now to find what that asymptote would be. Then the next pages are to compile all this stuff together. You'll be graphing rational functions with oblique asymptotes. Okay, so what I'd like to do is walk us through this rational function. I know we've listed domain range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, vertical asymptotes in this order, but that's not the way I do it. I'd like to first see if I can simplify this. Can I factor this and cancel anything? Turns out this does not factor. So now I'm just looking at the denominator, x minus five. I know it doesn't go into that, but that also does tell me that the vertical asymptote is when x minus five equals zero, so x equals five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now let's take a look at factoring this. We can't, we can't factor, but we can find the x-intercepts by doing the quadratic formula. So negative, negative 10 plus or minus, this is x equals square root of negative 10 squared minus four times 29 times one, all over two times one. So that's gonna be 10 plus or minus 100 minus 80, 116, so square root of negative 16. Uh-oh, that's an i. So we're gonna get 10 plus or minus four i over two, so it's five plus or minus two i. Well, those are zeros. They're not real numbers, so they're not x-intercepts. We have no x-intercepts. Do we have any y-intercepts? Well, the y-intercepts happen when x equals zero, so this would be zero, zero, 29 over negative 5. So what is that? Negative 5.8. So that's 0, comma, negative 5.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.8. And then the top is bigger than the bottom's degree. Therefore, this is going to be a candidate for um, an oblique asymptote. So I'm going to do 1, negative 10, 29. Use synthetic division here. One, five, negative five, negative 25, four. It has a remainder, which tells me it's not a clean factor, which tells me that I'm going to take this, x minus five. That's going to be my um, slanted asymptote or oblique asymptote, y equals x minus five. So one, two, three, here's negative five. It's got a slope of one. Now I can see, I'm ready to graph my function here, that it's coming up from here. It's going to loop in there somewhere and drop down. 
it's coming up from here. It's going to loop in there and go along, sucking right along that axis, the asymptote. It's never going to cross the x-axis. I have no x-intercepts. How's my domain look? Well, it's going to be continuous, except for this vertical asymptote of x equals 5. So therefore, I'm going to put it in interval notation. What about my range? I've got high values all the way down. Oh, there's a little gap in here, isn't there? We don't really have a tool for identifying where those will max out at this point, but there is a gap in there. We'll have to learn that at a later date. There's no horizontal asymptote, there's no holes. Hopefully that helps.